Hi there, Elizabeth Loninger here for Vocal Musician. In this video, we're going to look at the difference between dynamic microphones and condenser microphones, and I'm going to show you some of my favorite microphones and some of the microphones that my fellow singers love to use. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, so now let's talk about the difference between a dynamic microphone and a condenser microphone. You can find diagrams and explanations as to the technical differences, how they are built, um, and I'm not going to go uh, deep into that because, you know, there's a lot of that information already out there. What you need to know is, so for instance, the Shure SM58 Beta, that's a dynamic mic. Dynamic microphones do not need phantom power meaning they don't have to be powered up externally in order to function. They don't need an extra power source. It makes the dynamic microphone a little bit less sound sensitive or noise sensitive, so it doesn't pick up a lot of background noise. And it's a fairly rugged design. I mean, the Shure SM58 Beta, I don't know how many times it has fallen on the ground or even just the Shure SM58. I think they even once did a... Um, a trial where they rolled over it with a truck. I'm not sure that's true, but you can probably find it on YouTube somewhere. But again, because they're not as sensitive to noise, they're not as sensitive to any signal, they do filter out background noise pretty well. They're not as prone to feedback noise as condenser mics are. And that also means that they're really good for loud noises and for loud singing, for instance. On the flip side though, because they have this rugged design, they are not as sensitive to every little thing that you create, every little sound that you make. And so you may not get as much of a detailed performance and you also don't get a full frequency response. Now let's talk a little bit about condenser mics. This one, for instance, is a condenser mic. That's a Neumann KMS-105. And I like to use it for speaking because it has a very natural sound to it. It's very sensitive. It picks up many, many small things, little things. It has a wider frequency response, so it basically has more high and more low, so it gives you a fuller, richer tone. It is a condenser microphone, which means it needs phantom power, so when I plug it into my mixer, I have to make sure that my mixer actually does have phantom power. And it is more fragile, it is more sensitive to sound, and the electronics inside the mic do create a little bit of noise. And again, because it is so sensitive to sound, it does pick up background noise much more easily, which means it's also a bit more feedback prone. So it really depends on the situation that you find yourself in. Generally, most people use dynamic mics for live performances and condenser mics for studio work. Although there have been developments that have made it possible to kind of do both, but it really depends on the circumstances. All right. And now we're going to talk a little bit more about my favorite microphones and also microphones that my colleagues have been using. All right, again, I'm going to start with my favorite. My favorite microphone for a live performance with a band is the Shure SM58 Beta. This runs at about $160. And so it's uh, fairly reasonable and it's really, really sturdy. It's a great touring microphone. It's a great gigging microphone. And also what I like about it is that, for instance, compared to the regular Shure SM58, it has a bit of a kick in the higher end. It has a frequency boost between 4 and 9 kilohertz, and that really works well with my voice, because my voice is, in case you can't tell, a little bit darker. So it needs a bit of a push in the high end. And this one also does have a bass roll-off, so that beefs up the high end of the frequency spectrum a little bit more as well. So I love this one. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with just using a regular Shure SM58. It's, you know, it's a workhorse and it will serve you well and it's very versatile. You can also use it uh, in front of amplifiers, you can use it for drums. Basically, you can use it wherever you need a microphone. That's why the um, SM58 is still so popular and it's very reasonable at a hundred bucks. Now this one, as I already said, this is the KMS-105. It's a Neumann microphone. Neumann microphones are well known for their high-end studio quality 
And um, I also use a Neumann microphone when I'm recording in the studio. I have the Neumann M149, which I love. But um, for live, I do like this microphone as well. It is, um, it has a very rich sound. It has like the whole frequency spectrum is in there and it works really well in acoustic settings or also in settings where you have a fairly high end sound system that goes with it. That really brings out the full quality of this microphone. But again, it needs power, it needs phantom power and it is sensitive. You do not want to drop this microphone. And it's a bit pricey at $700. I don't really like to tour with this microphone, so I kind of keep it at home or I do small gigs around here. I do want to talk about another condenser microphone. This is the Shure Beta 87A. And um, I do like this one as well. It just doesn't have that high-end kick that the, um, the SM58 Beta has. I love the Shure Beta 87A for looping or whenever I'm using effects on stage because this one is a super cardioid microphone so it has a fairly small focal point that you really have to get close into and sing into and that way it doesn't pick up much background noise so I, I really quite like this one for anything where I'm using effects. For other voice types I've noticed that colleagues of mine with more soprano voices or more brighter voices really like the electro voice vocal microphones specifically in the jazz department in the jazz world at least the electro voice nd95 that's the really flat one on the top looks a bit weird um, but it's a very popular mic among jazz singers and that one runs at you know about 150 dollars so it's very reasonably priced and then the other microphone that many people seem to like is a biodynamic microphone. It's the M88TG, and it's also very popular and also a bit more for brighter voices. And it's a little bit pricier. It runs at $400. I read up on that microphone a little bit, and apparently it was made famous by Phil Collins, who loved to use it on tour. That's also a very popular touring microphone and gigging microphone. If you have any questions on any of the microphones that I just talked about, or if you want to go more into detail on dynamic mics or condenser mics, or also on studio singing, send us an email and um, I'll be happy to do a video on studio microphone technique as well. So I hope this video was helpful to you and um, I hope the tips and tricks were useful and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Hey, hey.